What's the worst first date you've ever been on? I met a girl on OkCupid. She seemed pretty down to earth and we had a lot in common. We chatted for several days through IM and emails and I asked her if she would like to meet up and get dinner. She agreed and all of a sudden she turned into Captain Needy Pants. The two days leading up to the date should have been my automatic red flag. She texted me constantly and would say things like I can't wait to see you. At first I thought it was cute, but after like 5 texts in one day saying the same thing, I thought she was getting a little out of control. I almost cancelled the date because I was getting such mega creeper vibes, but I decided not to. She shows up at the place we agreed to meet up at, and she looks way hotter than her pictures. She is gorgeous. She might have been one of the most attractive girls I have been out with. The date starts off pretty good and we are having good conversation. I started thinking maybe she was just genuinely excited to meet me and then, about 25 minutes into the date, she reintroduces the crazy side of herself. The first thing she said was so, what are we doing tomorrow night and I was not sure how she meant it, so I was laughed and said I'm sorry, I have plans tomorrow night. Well, this apparently was the wrong answer. She slams down her fork and she says you are going out with some other s tomorrow. Aren't you I wasn't even sure what to say, so I squinted my eyes a little and leaned my ear towards her and said excuse me? The next 5 minutes are still a mystery to me of what actually happened, but she went on a rant. At almost yelling volume, she proceeded to chew me out about how I was a horrible boyfriend, and how all she wanted in life was for me to love her. I finally was able to get a word in edgewise and said I am not your boyfriend, this is our first date. What the frick is wrong with you? I get the bills from the waiter, just hand him 60 bucks and start to leave. She follows me out and tries to stop me, and I am like I am sorry, but I need to go. She starts crying and she grabs my arm and will not let go and at some point she is actually on the ground with a death grip around my leg begging me to give her another chance. I finally break free and get to the parking deck and drive away. She is standing at the exit of the deck with tears streaming down her face and she is screaming something at me. I rolled up all the windows so I couldn't hear her. I drove away and was so thankful that date was over. She continued to blow up my phone for the next week and a half. On the following day, I had almost 30 missed calls from her, and over 50 text messages. I finally had the number blocked by Verizon and the drama stopped. I'm totally thankful she didn't know where I lived because I am sure she would have stalked the crap out of me. I just finished reading Assholes Finish first by Tucker Max, and I am immediately reminded of a portion of his book. I am paraphrasing. If there's one thing you need to know about dating women, it's this. 1. Hot. 2. Single. 3. Sane. Pick 2. Of course, like a lot of his book. S. This is a gross exaggeration. Still doesn't make it less funny and true on some level. I've told this story on reddit before but here goes. So I met this girl on the internet, and she seemed really nice and down to earth. We had a lot in common including our hobbies and politics and stuff like that, so I was thinking we might hit it off. We agree to meet up in person at a Calady Brothers coffee place. Now bear in mind that I'm not super attractive so up to this point she hasn't seen any pictures of me. Instead we have pre-arranged recognition signals. She walks in the door and I spot her by her clothing instantly, and start waving. She gets this sort of uncertain look on her face and walks over and says Sam and when I say yes she just says ha ha. No one walks out. Feels bad. Second edit. Or the blind. Thanks for the suggestions. On my first date with this girl I excuse myself to use the bathroom. She gets up and follows me making flirtatious remarks along the way. I think nothing of it assuming she needed to use the restroom too and was just making small talk. I walk inside the men's restroom and she walks straight in with me. So I says to Mabel I says, um I actually do need to use the restroom. Oh I'll watch no. Just number I was not able to pee in public for a while after that. Clearly she thought the date was going better than you did. Within the first 5 minutes, guy told me he killed his dog by leaving it in the hot car for 12 hours. When he realized I was horrified, he tried to pass it off as a joke. I left immediately. Blind date, arranged by a mutual friend. I get there, she's already eating appetizers, 
I'm 10 minutes early, then she orders the most expensive dinner on the menu, and tells me she did it because she knows I'm paying. A small talk fails and for 45 minutes she complains about how no one is refilling her wine glass. She kills the glass every 20 seconds. She mentions how she was told that I make a decent salary, multiple times. I try to be civil and change the subject. Awkward conversational topics ensue. Nothing even close to first date etiquette follows. 3 stroke 4 of the way through I go to the bathroom and our waiter walks by. Asks me if we are doing a reality show or something along those lines. Since he has seen this disaster in motion. We talk about how wild this woman is for about 5 minutes and then I ask him to stop at our table and and ask about the bill. I immediately say split checks and give him $80. Roughly 40 for my bill and 40 for his tip. The date looked shocked and ended up not being able to pay her bill. So the friend who hooked us up got a call and flipped the rest of her check. Her total came to be about $75. Last, blind date, ever. I'm glad to see you were quick enough not to cover her dumb butt. I went to college at Creighton in Omaha, me. This was nice because it was near an airfield, so even insecure, slightly chubby women like myself had a chance at a date. I met an Air Force guy with all American blue collar looks at a bar called Guitars and Cadillacs. That should have been my first clue, yeah? So on a Saturday, Airman Joe Blow or whatever says he'll pick me up from my dorm at 7. I get a call at 7.30 from him saying that while he was at a gas station, some lady bumped into his car and somehow shattered the window of his 1994 Camaro. Warning. Warning. So he goes back to the base to pick up his friend's car. A Plymouth K car with plastic for the passenger side window. We go to a movie. We hit up a Taco Bell for dinner. Mind you, I am not particular about big money dates. But when the conversation is waning between discussing the movie face off and a person's favorite vodka, I start to get fidgety. After Taco Bell, he's driving me back to the dorm when he pulls over into a gravel parking lot, puts the car in park, and grabs me for the wettest, most intrusive kiss I've ever experienced. Of course, my head has been pushed back onto the plastic framing the window, and I've used enough force to back away from the sweat attack that my head pops through the plastic sheeting. G-A-H-H-H-H I say, what are you doing? I thought you would be into it, he says as he wipes saliva off his cheek. I say, um, I think you better just take me back home. He says, my dong is seriously 9 inches long. I say, get me back to the dorm right now, please. The nice thing was that the wind blowing through the plastic sheeting made it nearly impossible to have a conversation on the way home. And this would be my worst date ever. Double date with a girl from college and two nerds. The girl who had asked me out was kind of a swervy driver and didn't he seem to have driven much before that night. Literally 5 seconds before pulling into our parking space the girl in the backseat threw up mid-sentence. She threw up all over her feet and clothes and all over the floor. To make matters worse the car did not belong to my date but was just a loner. I spent the night helping clean the car out. This date wasn't strange. But the circumstances regarding the sex sure was. I was dating this girl when I was 21 and she was 18. She still lived with her parents. And at the time I was living with a friend and his family. This didn't give us a whole lot of room for privacy. So we hooked up whenever and wherever we could. My aunt lived in the next town. And we had a pretty good relationship. She didn't mind if I brought a girl over to her house to have sex. Especially since she was rarely at home. It's a Friday night and I call my aunt on the phone to ask her if I could use her place for the evening. But she of course had no problem with it, but said I had to get the key from my cousin, her son. No problem. I pick up my girlfriend, drive about 30 minutes to the pool hall where my cousin was hanging out, got the key from him, then head over to the house. I assumed no one was home since they all usually go out on Friday nights, so we made our way to the back bedroom. This was the biggest bed in the house, and one we had used before. I opened the door and see two old people sleeping. Dang. I told my girl that was my grandparents, so we had to use the twin bed. We made our way to the other bedroom and proceeded to pound away. When it was over, we lay there in the afterglow. We didn't want to leave, but she had to be home and it was another 30 minute drive back to her place. I get up, get dressed, and go out into the living room. 
There is an old man there that I didn't know. This wasn't unusual as my aunt would usually have people at her house that I didn't know. We exchanged greetings and I told him I was my aunt's nephew. He said that he was diabetic and that he had to get up to get something to eat. My girlfriend had finished dressing. We said goodbye to the old man and headed out the door. As we were walking out the door, a car pulled into the driveway. I didn't recognize the person, but waved anyway. Got in the car, then drove away. All the time, this guy was just staring at us. Drove to take my girlfriend home, then drove all the way back to give the key back to my cousin. I walk up to him and he says, I gave you the wrong key. What do you mean you gave me the wrong key I said, you gave me the key for the house over on Smith Street. I know, he said, we don't live there anymore, we live over on Turner Street now, what do you mean you don't live there anymore, I was just there, who lives there now I asked, heck if I know, he replied, we moved last week, this would explain the strange couple in the bedroom, and the strange looks from the guy pulling into the driveway, since the house was small, and only had two bedrooms, I figured that we must have had sex on his bed, it's a good thing I was, sadly, quick on the draw back then. I can't imagine what would have happened if he wouldn't have walked in on two strangers going at it on his bed. TL. DR. Had sex in a stranger's house. Whoa. I'm sure my girlfriend will tell you it's with me. At the time I liked to go on long walks to clear my head, and my favorite place to go was walking through the woods. I always went out for a walk at night time, so I had gotten used to walking through the woods at night, and I really enjoyed it. I still do. There's something serene and peaceful there in the darkness and silence. Anyway, after a relatively successful evening, watching Yes Man in the cinema, and chilling out in the arcade, I opted to walk her home. She accepted. Yes. One point. I then offered to take her my usual route, and I told her it was through the woods. I wanted to show her why I liked it so much. No doubt I came across as some sort of rapist. She still doesn't let me hear the end of it. John on our first date you tried to take me through the woods at midnight. Fair enough. Even I see her point. What on earth was I thinking? Still together though. She must have liked me. We went to see the high school's version of American Idol. He was 15 minutes late. I had to save our seats. And I had to buy his ticket. When he finally got in he clenched my hand in a sweaty grip throughout the entire night. While shaking nervously. It was cute. Whatever. He kept making awkward conversation and tried to make me laugh. Which I tried to do. Politely. Afterward. We walked out of the building to where his mom was picking him up. He kissed me on the forehead. Hard. Oh. High school. I brought a girl back to my house for dinner and a movie. I had previously made a bet with her where and if she won. I'd make her dinner and bake pie. But if I won she had to make out with me. Either way. Win win right so we finish dinner and go back into my bedroom to watch a movie midway through the flick she says i'm still a bit hungry i think i'll go grab a quick bite of the leftovers she gets up and goes into the kitchen i decide about 45 seconds later as my stomach rumbles that this sounds like a great idea i arrive in the kitchen to see her standing over my silverware drawer emptying it into her purse I was shocked, I'd never had a date try to rob me before. I asked, what the heck are you doing her reply, giggle oopsie I'd have been pee already, but the girly giggling bs answer just put me over the edge. I walked up, looked in her bag, and saw that she'd only managed to grab some of the crappier silverware so far. At that point, I reached over to the counter and grabbed a slice of the pie. I looked her in the eyes and said, don't forget your dessert then, while holding her gaze. I dropped the pie into her purse and smashed it up as best I could with the sides of the purse to make sure it got in there nice and good. Kicked her out. Never saw her again. I was set up on a blind date with an aerobics instructor. I'm tall, lean, and fit myself. I'd recently smashed my Honda sedan. My fault and was temporarily driving an old pickup instead. She spent the day telling me how much better she could do than with me. The feeling was mutual. Dating this girl who I later realized was pretty much using me to buy her stuff. I took her out to dinner and surprised her with concert tickets to Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains. She was excited, but then proceeded to spend most of the rest of dinner on the phone telling her friends. Kinda rude, but no big deal. 
Fast forward to the night of the show. I take her to dinner and she acts icy cold. Barely makes conversation and shrugs me off every time I try to make conversation. Ha. Take the sky train down to the venue. Doesn't want me to touch her at all. Pulls away at incidental contact. Even. Ha. We get to the venue. Go inside and I buy us a couple of drinks. She curtly thanks me for the drink and then says she'll be right back. I grab my drink and head to the stage. Where I see her. Talking to some other guy. It becomes very clear. Quite quickly that they're together. Or at least have been before. So I walk up and say. There you are. What's up she replies. Oh. It's you. Hi. This is my friend. He gives me a nod. And a look that pretty much says it all. They're together. And I've been played like a freaking fiddle. So now I'm in this horrible situation. Jerry Cantrell goes on stage in 30 minutes. And I'm gonna have to either uh, go home now, wallowing in misery, or b, stay and see the show, knowing this goddamn w is enjoying it with her fuck toy, less than 20 feet from me, frick. So, I do what any other Alice in Chains fan would do, I get stinking drunk on whiskey and beer, and sloppily dance mosh for the next 2 hours, trying to ignore that stinging feeling every time I see her grinding on the scumbag. The show was great, and the crowd was awesome, minus the 2. So that was a plus. I went home as soon as Jerry left the stage. Said eat crap to the girl on the way out. And pretty much drunkenly sobbed on the ride home. Freaking pathetic. But at least I learned a lesson about how evil some girls can be. And learned to protect my heart more closely in the future. Worst date I've ever been on. Worst. Best heck. I don't even know. Picked a girl up from her house and walk into the nearby neighborhood district to pick out a restaurant to eat at. Jokingly, I said McDonald's. Frick it. I love McDonald's. She said if we go there, I am breaking up with you. I couldn't stand something like that. So thus we went to McDonald's. Not a single frick was given that day. I'm sure you know the game girls, people in general, always play where they want to go get something to eat but then they want you to decide where to go. I always just say McDonald's and let it linger. They will always figure out somewhere they actually want to go after that. I have a bit of a nerd fetish, so awkward dates kind of come with the territory. The worst was when I went out with a co-worker friend. We were flirty but nothing serious. He was so nervous he brought his roommates so he wouldn't have to go alone. He was 28. Sad part is that I would have stuck around were it not for Rumi Mickford wheel. Like I said, nerd fetish. Thank you for existing. My worst date was way back in 6th grade. Even though girls thought I was cute then, which I actually didn't know until late high school. I was a super shy geeky kid who played tons of computer games and legos. But late one night, after a school dance where I slow dancing with one of the most popular girls, her friend called me up. In the most typically cute middle school awkward conversations between the girl's friend and the girl, we became boyfriend and girlfriend. So we set up a first couple's date that next Friday to go to the park, maybe the mall, etc. At that time, I started playing the PC game McWarriors 4, so I was obsessed with McWarriors. I love them so much that I, poorly, drew battle matches all the time. So, being the cute but shy and totally inexperienced 11 year old, I had the bright idea of spending the day drawing battle matches at the park. I showed her my pictures of a mad cat MK. 2. What a gorse cannon looks like and how it works. Just the nerdiest 6th grader crap you could possibly think of. For 2 hours I basically forced the poor girl to try and make up the best battle match with the best weapons. And though she was trying to get us to go to the mall, I wanted to show off my drawing skills and my knowledge of McWarrior. During the date, I thought I was the hottest crap in the world. The date ended with her making an excuse to leave and me thinking nailed IT. The next day I was met with awkward looks and stares. And finally a classmate told me that the girl I took on the date thought I was a creeper nerd and I was made fun of for the rest of the year as the unpopular geek who was obsessed with robots. There wasn't even an official breakup either. Though on a happy note, I learned how to break dance over that summer and became the most popular guy in school for all of 7th grade. Ah, middle school. You should call her up sometime and remind her that you're still going out. One night in the 8th grade, I finally got the balls to ask this girl out. She so happened to be a friend of my best friend's current girlfriend. 
so we decided to make it a double date. During the movie everything was going as planned. I sat by her while my friend sat with his girlfriend. Then we see a couple of her bitchy girlfriends walk into the theater. And so happened to see the girl I was with right away. She then motioned with her hand for her friends to come over here. When her friends got to where we were sitting, the girl I asked out turned to me and asked can you scoot down a seat so I can sit next to my friends I said sure. So I got up and just walked out of the theater. And to add insult to injury, she stayed there and her friends ate the popcorn I bought. We were 14. Didn't know what the frick to do about women. So I took this one girl to Subway on Valentine's Day for some sandwiches. It was freezing out, with 5 feet of snow. She brought her friend. For the whole meal I talked about the benefits of Subway. We walk back. On the way, her friend kicks a piece of plastic. For some stupid reason. I don't know if it was stress or whatever. I thought it'd be awesome to jump up and down on this piece of plastic while grunting. I crap you not. That's what I did to try and impress my date. I destroyed a helpless piece of plastic, then kicked it onto the road. I still cringe to this day and I'm trying to black it out. It was very violent. Yet for some reason, this chick still dug me. She talked about how cold her hands were the whole way back. At the time, having so little experience, I didn't understand the signals of her wanting to hold my hand. We got back to school, said goodbye, and we were forever awkward around each other for the rest of our high school careers. I am not sure if this counts as a date or not, but after my roommates and I found a free kitty on Craigslist, we decided to adopt it. We went out to the guy's house, and my roommate brought her BF. The guy giving away the cat was only doing so because he still lived with his dad, as an adult over 20, but his dad was getting remarried and the new wife was allergic to cats, so they made him give it away. This is all fine and good, but the creeper part comes in when he takes the cat, still in the cage and proceeds to talk to it in an extremely high voice, telling it how much he loved it and would never forget it. This is also okay, a little strange but okay. But then he proceeds to lament about how he is losing his only friend and about how he can never get a girlfriend, and asks us about our relationship status. My roommate pipes up and says her BF is waiting in the car, but I am more than single and also looking. At this point, the guy is like a freaking falcon diving down on a mouse. He grabs my hand, kisses it in the most awkward and wet way possible, and asks me out on a date. He also asks for my number and to keep him updated on his precious baby, about how he likes to draw on deviant art and about how his drawings are art and not traced. He gives me his account name and asks me to look him up, followed by asking my phone number. I decide to give him the number to time, my friend, with a huge troll grin on her face, loads the cat into the car, and we leave. He blows me a kiss as we leave. I looked up his account just for the lulls after a few days. It was full of poorly drawn Sonic P, but also a new pic that had a depiction of a blue Sonic kissing a pink Sonic's hand. My friend then told me it was definitely a sure thing and that I should go for it. Met a girl online. Yes, I know. But I had had relatively good experiences with this before. I was very much not in the mood for a serious thing at the time either. So I met this girl and her friend at some house which they were parked outside of. I walk up to the car, and the girl looks slightly less attractive than the two pictures she had up. Only two pics on her profile and both from the same angle, normally a red flag but frick it. I took a chance, but she doesn't seem terrible at first. So we go to a grocery store because her friend needs something. As soon as I get out of my car, her friend hits me up for gas money. I'm like WTF but kind of shrug it off anyway. Maybe her friend is just nuts. The girl I'm supposed to be seeing gets out of the car and is a good 15 pounds heavier than she appeared to be. She's wearing pants that my grandpa would have worn when he was alive and a two sizes too small might morph than Power Rangers jacket. At this point, I'm starting to prepare for an emergency evac cause this is going downhill fast. As we walk into the store, I am getting sudden terrible whiffs of B.O. I realize in horror that they're coming from her. Keep in mind we're outside. The wind is blowing. All of her clothes are on and I can still smell her funk. Now imagine the smell when this chick takes her pants off for sexy time. No thanks. So now I know I need to bail. 
I feign interest in whatever the heck she was talking about while I figure out an escape route. As I actually make real eye contact with her for the first time, I realize she also has a lazy eye. WTF. So I go to the bathroom in the grocery store and call my friend. I tell him to call me in no less than 10 minutes and tell me I am supposed to be at a party he's hosting within the hour because I'd promised I'd help set up. The stinky girl gets in my car and finally my phone rings. We play out the whole thing yada 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 oh so sorry. I promised I'd be there. Sucks to cut this short etc so she asks if I can give her a ride to where she's staying. Gladly. So the whole drive there. She tells me this story about how she stabbed a girl in high school because she dumped a good friend of hers or something. I was beginning to wonder if this girl was intentionally trying to make me as uncomfortable as humanly possible. Never again. Haha. <laughs> nice job with getting the frick out of there. Seems like no one in this thread has the balls to leave a crappy date. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.